We're back now. I've reset the router. I've cleared out the CAS configuration. We're now ready to set up the Common Channel Signaling Configuration, or CCS. And we're connected via ISDN out to a PSTN simulator that I have. And one of the things we need to understand when we're working with ISDN is we need to say, what is the ISDN switch type? Different vendors might do ISDN slightly different, or they might use something called QSIG or QSigling, where different PBX vendors can intercommunicate using this common language of love called QSIG, we need to set up that switch type. We can do it globally, or we can do it in interface configuration mode if we're going to be connecting out to different ISDN switch types. In this case, there's just one. So let's go into global configuration mode and say our ISDN switch type, and you can see several options in the context sensitive help. Our switch type we're going to say is primary hyphen NI. Let's go back into our T1 controller just as we did with CAS. Let's say controller T1 0 slash 0 slash 0. We still need to set up things like the framing. We'll say it's extended super framing. The line coding we'll keep at B8ZS. The clock source is still going to be the line. Oh, and one of the comments I got from a previous video, which I thought was a great comment, was as we're going through this, it might be helpful to point out default settings. Interestingly, when it comes to the controller, the defaults I've seen vary. It depends on your platform or your version of Cisco IOS. I've got one router that defaults to SuperFrame for framing and AMI for line coding, and I've got another router that defaults to ESF and B8ZS. So you just need to check your own platform when it comes to the default settings for your T1 controller. Let's administratively bring up the controller by doing a no shutdown. And instead of setting a DS0 group as we did with our channel associated signaling, we're going to create a PRI group, a primary rate interface group. Here's how we do that. We say instead of DS0 group, we say PRI hyphen group. And here we're going to say not here's a locally significant identifier. Instead, we're going to say here are the time slots that I want to belong to this group. And we could say 1 through 24. Important thing to remember here, guys, channel 24 on an ISDN circuit based on a T1, that's our signaling channel. That's the channel that's going to be carrying our Q.931 signaling. So it definitely needs to be part of this group. But I've got a slight challenge here on my router. My router does not have enough DSP resources, that's digital signal processor resources, to handle all of those extra channels, all 24 channels in the circuit. And that's fairly common. It takes some processing resources to convert between the PSTN and our internal voice over IP network. So what we might do instead is just say, Give me the first three channels on this T1. I'll say time slots 1-3. This is something very common if you have your own home lab. A lot of people don't want to spend the extra money to buy DSPs to accommodate a full T1. You can simulate just about anything you need to with a partial T1. That's what I'm doing. We'll say time slots 1-3, but we got to have 24. That's the signaling channel. How do we also include 24? We give a comma and then say 24. PRI group time slots 1 3, 24. And as I speak, you can see these voice ports coming up. In fact, you also notice a reference to interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23. That quote unquote serial interface is our signaling interface. In fact, we have some work to do inside of that serial interface. Let's go there now. Let's say interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23. And you might wonder, why is it 23? Didn't we say it's 24? 24 is our signaling channel? Well, interestingly, when we're setting up our PRI group time slots, the numbering starts at 1. But when we talk about our channels as part of a serial interface, the numbering starts at 0. So for the serial interface, 23, because the numbering starts at 0, 23 is our 24th channel. A little confusing. Here in interface configuration mode, one thing we want to do is say ISDN incoming voice voice. What are we saying here? We're saying when a call comes in over this ISDN circuit, we want that call to be forwarded to internal DSPs, the digital signal processors. You might wonder, as opposed to what? 
Well, remember back in the days when analog modems were very common and service providers would have their customers call into them via analog modems to get out to the internet, for example? But back when it was popular, Cisco was a participant in that arena, and you could buy modems, internal modems. They were called MICA modems that would go inside of the router, and a call would come in from the PSTN over this ISDN circuit, and it could be directed to an internal modem. We don't want that here. We want it to be directed to a DSP. We want to say that these are voice calls coming in. That's why we give this command. And because I'm using only three channels inside of my PRI circuit, I want to make sure that when the router goes to grab a channel, it starts at number one and it doesn't start at number 23. I want the channel number order to be ascending. I need to specify that. We say ISDN B chan for B channel. Remember, these are bearer channels. We've got 23 bearer channels and one D channel or one signaling channel. We're going to say ISDN B chan number order. And the default is descending, where it would start at channel 23 and work its way down on a T1. I want it to be ascending, so I'll say ascending. And something we'll talk about later in the month is digit manipulation, the way that the called number and the way that the calling number appears as it goes out to the PSTN, for example. We might want to manipulate that, and the Q931 protocol can certainly carry that type of information. So I like to give, just as a common practice, a couple of commands, let me show them to you, that will send some of this number information inside of ISDN. I like to say ISDN outgoing display IE, that's an information element, and ISDN outgoing, and I specify the information element for the redirecting number. This is useful when you're doing voicemail and a call comes into one phone and you need to divert that call off to voicemail. Well, when voicemail gets that redirected call, it needs to know which phone number redirected it. So we know which voicemail box to send it to. This command allows that redirected number to be carried to the voicemail system. Well, I think we're done with our configuration. Let's do a show controller T1 and we see that our T1 status is up. Excellent. We see that the framing is extended super framing. The line coding is B8ZS. We're getting the clock source from the line or from the service provider. And just like we did with the CAS configuration, let's take a look at what voice port or what voice ports we have. We do a show voice port summary. And we see that we have one logical port, but that one logical port contains three channels. It's port 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23. Again, the 0 slash 0 slash 0, that's the T1 controller identifier. And the 23 specifies the 24th channel, which is the D channel on this T1 circuit. By the way, if we were doing this on an E1 controller, instead of a 23, it would be a 15. Remember when we talked about an E1, we said that channel 17 was used for signaling? Well, from the perspective of the router, it does not think at all about channel 1. Channel 1 was used for framing and synchronization. So from the perspective of the router, it's the 16th channel that's going to be used for signaling. And the numbering starts at 0, so the 16th channel would show up as a 15. So if we were doing this on an E1 controller, it would be something like 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 15. And just to make sure that this voice port is working, let's do a debug. ISDN Q931, and I'm going to call in from my PSTN simulator into a phone connected off of this router. And let's just make sure the call goes through. Now, I will not be able to call out yet. I've not yet educated this router as to how to call phone numbers on the outside. That's coming up. That's when we talk about dial peers. But for now, we need to verify that the voice port is working. Let's do that. I'm going to go off hook, and let's dial a number. And you probably heard in the background that call go through. And I was calling for my, uh, looks like I was calling for my 911 emergency number. And here's the number that I was calling internally. And we saw that that call came in over serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23, as expected. And we see that we used channel 1. That's because I told the B channel selection order to be ascending to start at channel 1. Let's take a step back as we conclude this video and remember what we've done in the first two videos this month. We said we had three types of analog ports, FXS, FXO, E and M. And in the next video when we talk about dial peers, 
we could say in a pot style peer, a plain old telephone service style peer, to get to a phone number, go out of this port. FXS port 0 slash 0 slash 0, for example, or go out of this FXO port. Or if we wanted to combine a grouping of FXO, FXS, or e &M ports, remember last time we talked about a trunk group? We could make several analog ports belong to a trunk group, and we could tell our dial peer, go to this trunk group. That's how we could point out of a router using an analog port. In this video, we've taken a look at two different ways of pointing out of the router using a digital port. One was using channel associated signaling, where instead of all the robust information carried inside of Q.931, we relied on simply four signaling bits, the A, B, C, and D bits, to indicate things like an on hook or an off hook condition. We saw that with CAS, channel associated signaling, we could reference a DS0 group when we're pointing out of the router. Finally, we took a look at ISDN, which is a flavor of common channel signaling. And with common channel signaling, we can point to, in our example, port 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23, where 23 is representing the 24th time slot because the numbering starts at 0. We now know how to set up analog and digital voice ports to get us out to the rest of the world, whether those ports are analog or digital using common channel signaling or channel associated signaling or a wink start or a loop start or ground start. We've talked about all these different signaling types. That's going to set the stage beautifully for the next video where we will take a look at dial peers. Dial peers allow us to educate our router to get to different phone numbers. That's coming up next time.